So <clears throat> the next thing on my to-do list is to 3D model and mount the batteries onto the robot. Here's one of the batteries we bought. It's a VTC6 battery. It's the very best battery money can buy. I think each battery is like $12 or something. It's 18650, 3000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt battery. And I believe it has like like 25 or 30 amps it can output. It's super powerful, super high. Um, like you have batteries that have this high of a capacity, but they have a slow discharge rate and slow charge rate. This thing can discharge fast. Like this is this is a high output battery. How much exercise today? Not not that much, but I don't exercise anymore. I get all my exercise by working. That's my new life philosophy. Don't exercise, just work more. Like, work hard. Yeah, I think this is kind of like a vape. Vape ones have to be high, high output, too. Okay, so this is... Um, 10 centimeters diameter by, wait, no, what am I talking, 17 and a half millimeters, 17 millimeters by, Sixty-four millimeters. I should probably be writing this down. Maybe I should say it's bigger than it is, though, just to be safe on my model. So I'll round up. Okay, so nineteen millimeters diameter. by 65 millimeters length. Okay. So now we have to make a two scale model of that should be pretty easy and then we'll just start chucking them into the robot okay How many will it have? Um, that's a good question. I actually don't know the answer to that right now. I'm just going to like put as many as I can fit kind of at this point ish. But I, at the same time, I do need room for like other stuff too that I still haven't added, like uh, 
all the motor controllers and different things that I haven't yet placed in it. So I need kind of room for miscellaneous. So I'm just going to go with my instincts as much as I can here. That's the best I can tell you. I'll probably try to fit, I feel like, um, because we've already placed all the motors, all the cooling systems, the main computer, um, all the muscle systems. We've placed the cooling and air cooling and water, water cooling reservoirs and tubing all the all the bones the pumps so now we just need um, the batteries the power supply and the motor controller boards and all the sensors and then like the webcam all oh, the speakers actually um where am I going to put the speakers? You know what? I, I'll probably put the speakers like right here. Like a big speaker. Maybe two. One here, one here or something. And then we'll need the webcam eyes. But we got plenty of room for that inside the head. We didn't use the head at all. So that'll be good to cap have the head have extra space if we need something last minute. Yeah, the pelvis is going to be where I put all these batteries at. 65 millimeters. Okay. This ruler is to scale with a real life ruler. Like if you 3D printed it, it'd be an exact ruler. So that's why I know that this battery now is real life, the real size of a real battery. At least I think. Let me check it with the hand. It doesn't it looks kind of big right now, but Let me see. Yeah, that's right. It, it looks right. Compares to a hand. Yeah, this model is to scale, so I'm making the, the battery to scale. So that I can... Um, I mean, there's no point of doing all this design work if it's not to scale. Then I can't even use it. Like, I won't even know if things really fit. So, the whole point of this is to make sure... The whole robot design fits, everything works in terms of placement, sizing, everything. Okay, so I was thinking we'll hang it like Christmas lights. Um, should I put them this way, vertical, or sideways? Hmm. Vertical. Definitely vertical. Okay. I should probably leave this little gap between the ribcage and the computer just for miscellaneous extra room for circuit boards and stuff. I don't want to get too greedy with these batteries. I want to try to just keep them kind of together. And I want to leave lots of space around them for airflow and for also um, miscellaneous things we might need later. I don't know. All right, so we can probably start. Well, wait a minute. I'll do just half. 
because we're we're just we're just filling half the body. So I'll just do half the motor. So I'll just fill this half of the pelvis area. And we'll just see how it goes. That'll save some time because we'll make it symmetrical on the other side. So we don't have to do both sides on the model. Um. Did I make it a little higher? Nah, that's probably good. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Hi, Nick Lee. Is this cyberpunk? No, this is um, the design for my robot. Whoa! This is exciting, putting the batteries in. I don't know why. Something about it tells me we're, we are now approaching the finish line, so to speak. <clears throat> no, if you copy paste, it causes Maya to completely bug out and become low frame rate. Something about um, when when each texture is copy pasted, it says like texture one underscore copy underscore name of texture underscore something, and after you copy paste it like a hundred times, the name of each texture becomes like a paragraph and then when you try to move something or whatever it like needs to write all this data and somehow it causes the whole program to bug out because of how they coded it it's just poor coding so you cannot copy paste in my with good performance it, it will ruin the whole i mean like it'll cause my whole computer to slow down And I'm so glad I learned that, because I, I seriously was planning to upgrade my computer. I thought my computer just couldn't handle Maya, and, and then I found out it's a stupid software bug, and Maya runs perfectly, you can see, with OBS running. Like, I have, like, I could barely handle the skeleton, and now look at all this stuff, all these, like, million other things I added. Um, it's running perfect and smooth. Just because I got rid of, I stopped copy pasting. There's no copy pasted stuff at all, and so now Maya runs perfectly. Huh. I wonder how many batteries are going to fit. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here.
Is the original Adam still intact? Yeah. And this robot, which is my second robot, will be made first, or it'll be completed first, and it will finish building Adam for me. This way, all the work I did building Adam's bones will not be wasted. But the idea of spending like two more years just building bones doesn't work for me. I just can't wait that long. <clears throat> No, I don't think I can put another layer, so I just got the one layer. Um, can I come through here? I gotta consider the muscles, too. Each of these red lines are muscles, so I don't want to interfere too much. These red lines actually cause the, the twisting of the upper torso. I think they're called intercoastal muscles. Um, but I think they can go over the batteries. Or under. Maybe they can go under too. Because these batteries are just going to be hanging. Like a string to each battery will be just tied up here. And they'll just be draped. Just hanging. They'll be able to like move around. They're just going to be dangling, like a, like a Christmas lights, just hanging a string of them vertically in sheets. Actually, the robot has a working wiener. Sorry, here. You can see it's really small. Because it's not a sex bot. This is a, a wiener that is for actually peeing out um, coolant. Once it gets too warm, it'll pee it out and it'll drink ice water to replace it. It's not going to be a sex bot. There, there will never be a sex bot. Ah, uh, no! Premarital sex is still not allowed, even if it's with a robot. Because, um... Lust is not allowed. And I don't think you can have sex without lusting. Um, well, no, you can with your wife. For the purpose of making love. But it can't be lustful love making. It has to be... You have to be worshipping God the whole time. Then it's allowed... Actually, no. Um, the bodily urge to have an orgasm has to leave as well. It's not a need. That urge only stems out of being a lustful person. If you eradicate all lust, then from your heart, from your eyes, everything, you don't have bodily urges sexually at all anymore. You become completely 
asexual. I mean, you might still find the opposite sex or same sex or whatever attractive, but um, you're not um, sexually motivated by it. How much power will I need? Um, I think we said uh, like 6,000 watts. Would be like peak, peak need. Like if the robot's like doing a backflip. But it'd just be a burst of that. Like, it wouldn't be sustained all the time. Like, if it's just, like, sitting in a chair twiddling its thumbs, it'd probably need, like, 150 watts. might look like I'm taking a long time, but I'm checking for clearances, I'm checking for things that could cause issues with the movement of certain muscles I've placed, which you guys don't even know like how they work or anything, but since I built all this stuff, I know where all the muscles go, how they move, what their job is. Like, there is a lot of anatomy study to get to this point. I literally sculpted every single bone, every single muscle in the human body, and labeled them all. And have to know where they attach and what their job is and how they actuate the body. So, all that has to be taken into account. Can I swap the battery pack out? Not this internal one, but it's going to wear an external battery backpack that, that it can swap out for another battery backpack. This way it can have full non-stop run time. The internal one is just um, to keep it running when the external one, we don't want it wearing a backpack. So like if, if we're like showing it off to people, like at a robotic convention or something, I don't know. And wearing a backpack would like take away from how cool it looks or whatever if we just want it just to be show off without that then it will run off these but the backpack will be like for longer term operation I actually, I just have no idea how long the onboard batteries will maintain it, but it's kind of like a uh, motherboard has like the coin cell battery, just like so you can 
so it will boot up or whatever when connected to power it needs like some onboard power that's kind of what this is it's just like enough battery to get it by while it's changing battery packs external battery packs and I'm pretty happy with even how much room we have to do that I, I thought maybe we won't have any onboard room for batteries and we'll just have purely external but then that'd be a real problem because how will he switch between external battery packs the minute he unplugs himself he's totally shut down so he does need a certain amount of onboard batteries just to even be able to switch between external battery packs without shutting down we don't want him to have to shut down at all like ever maybe never so this is kinda like redundant batteries here to get him by while he's switching to his externals and yeah it'll, it'll be a decent amount I think he'll be able to maybe operate for like 10 minutes with no external battery packs which is perfect because like I said having some big clunky external battery pack will take away from the impact of seeing a standalone humanoid robot that fits in a human form factor that can actually function so I want him to be able to look that way, just look like a total human just standing there um, with nothing external, no cords, no backpacks on the outside, nothing, just looking human. I think that will add a lot. Like if you're grading a robot, you would downgrade it if it needed like to be plugged into the wall at all times to work that would mean it's not a like a wireless robot, right? You want your robot to be wireless. And if it needs an external battery pack that looks kind of big and clunky, you'd take a grade off for that too. But if it can operate purely off of internal batteries, that means the designer was space sufficient enough to to manage to fit internal batteries into it. So that would give you points as a designer that would be accredited to you as good design so I'm trying to do like the best I can in every category that the robot can be graded on and I feel that a robot that looks completely human is gonna get points because if the robot looked slightly not human or slightly fake or something it would lose points Somebody that made a humanoid robot that looks completely human would get more points. So I'm anticipating that type of grading. Even though right now, if you can make a robot at all, people are like 100% perfect. But once robots become more common, whoever's got the most realistic robot will win. Hey, mailbox. If there's no robot then what do you call what's on my screen right now
is AI technology at a place where my robot can do the things I want it to? No, but my AI technology that I've developed myself is. My current AI technology is 200 years, I think, ahead of its time. I'm six years into this project, so how's my progress? Good. Six years ago, I didn't even know what a transistor was. So I think I came a long way. Six years ago, I was a guy that wanted to make a robot. Now, I'm a guy that wants to make a robot and knows what he's doing. Big difference. I never sold you 2%. Will the government stop me from building it? I don't think so. I mean, the government would be proud if... I was the number one roboticist in the world. I would like make whatever country I live in number one, right? Wouldn't they want to be number one? If you think about like competing space programs and stuff, they would be like proud of me like an Olympic athlete that represents my country. Well, I'd be a robot maker that represents my country. Well, we, we would be like, I, I would bring my country like a great deal of like uh, worldwide like respect or something right I don't think that one fits at all Oof. I don't know if it was a group
Oh, Rose. Rose. Oh. Why is it doing that? Man, this robot needs to eat more donuts. That's what. That's what he needs to do. I'm putting some weight on him. I knew I might have to do this. I decided this a long time ago. If we need more room for batteries, I, I already decided. If we need room, more room for anything, I'll make a fat robot. I don't care. It's not even that fat. It's just like if you ate a big meal, even skinny people can have their stomach puff out more. The baby chimp? Yeah, it's exciting. Hey, not everyone's on board with this gender, political, whatever. My robot tells me that it feels it was born a woman, then it's going to go into a time of discipline.
We'll use different band weights to offset the weight in the front to prevent it falling forward on its gut. Uh, I don't know what you mean, like, you think that the batteries are making it front heavy? It wouldn't matter. If you strapped a 50 pound dumbbell to my stomach, I would lean back more. Like, it's got every muscle the human body has. So, it can activate its lower back muscles to compensate for any additional weight placed on the front of its body. Some muscles will be stronger. Well, every muscle on the human body, I selected a motor that I believed would match or exceed the strength of that muscle on the human body. So, however strong a human back is, that's how strong this robot's back will be if not stronger. We would grow stronger muscles? Well, we might grow stronger muscles to like, if we use a muscle a lot so that it's like less effort rather than like strain what muscles we have to make them work super hard. We would grow bigger muscles so that our existing muscles won't be like straining so much. Though, like, so, like, an obese person might grow bigger leg muscles. Could they survive on a smaller leg muscles? Yes, but it'd just be, like, extremely difficult. Well, so, so growing bigger muscles isn't necessary. It just makes it easier. This robot doesn't need to make things easier. That is kind of a lot of batteries, right? I think. That's a ton of batteries, isn't it? I don't even know. How many 18650 batteries are in, um, like an e bike? Let me check. E-bike battery pack. All right, a 48 volt, 20 amp hour e-bike pack is how many batteries total? <sighs> I 
Maybe I have notes on this. Oh, I don't know. Okay, it's... Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Three point seven volts, forty eight. Okay. Okay, it's four volts per battery times twelve makes forty eight volts. So that's twelve in series, and then. It's, if each battery is 3 amp hours, if it's 20, it'd be 5 deep. So let's say 5 deep, yeah, for a typical 5 deep, 12 series, 5 deep. That's 60 cells. for like just a basic e-bike and this thing will go I don't know like 50 miles I don't know so 60 cells how many do we have so far one two three Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, twenty, thirty. We got like thirty-five. If we put thirty on the other side too, that's already sixty cells. So this is like already an e-bike. Just with that, we could still fill all of this. Um. So. So we're looking at um. Maybe we'll put in like uh. Like 200 cells? Well, yeah, okay, so... If you're wondering about mu muscle strength in a robot, so... The more current you send to a, a motor, the stronger the motor is. Or, or more specifically, like, you can make the robot put out less power by, okay, so, how do I put this, um, a motor's controlled by sending power in little spurts, on, off, on, off, you send power, boom, boom, boom. It's on, off, on, off. The more time you leave it on, the more consistent power is being pushed through that motor. And so it would be like on 70% of the time, off 30%, instead of on 10% of the time, off 90%. So that's how you adjust the, the amount of strength of each muscle. That's how you also adjust the speed and different things. So I can adjust the speed and the total strength of every muscle in the robot's body. Okay, so now... Um, hi Waffle House. We'll throw on another stack from here over. Do I have interest in biohacking? No. I mean, is it interesting? Sure, but but I, I want nothing to do with it. Besides, I've already got way, way, way too many projects going on, but it's uh, too, like, cruel. Even to a dragonfly, like, shoving electrodes in its brain. I mean, it might not even know, but it's just, like, in principle. I, I don't like, um, 
harming and hacking stuff. Even for like religious reasons too. Okay. I don't know if adding that stomach fat was worth it. Kinda seems like it wasn't. It made the robot fatter, but it didn't really give that much benefit. So it's almost like why have a chubby robot if it's not really helping? The cost benefit analysis told me it was not worth it. Besides, what am I doing? Promoting obesity with a robot? People will be like, I don't need to go on a diet. Even the robots are fat. I don't know. Are you still exercising? No, I don't exercise at all now. I, I have this new, like, philosophy of exercising through work so I want to work I want to work hard and in so doing get my exercise so I've been working a lot on cars and stuff I get exercise that way. I kind of don't even like these front batteries here. I'm just going to get rid of them. There's just not much room there. Might as well just do that. I can flatten out his belly even more if I want to that way. So then, um... Let's see, we can do, uh... A few more here. I'm kind of freaking out, though, about the motor controllers, the more I think about it. Like, that's, that's nothing trivial. Motor controllers take up a lot of space. And I'm afraid to, like, go ham, fill it, stuffing everything with batteries when we've still got to fit, like, 400 motor controllers. Like, like I need room for that. So I might actually call it on battery placement placing I don't I don't want to I mean this could literally cause my whole design to fail if I don't leave enough room for motor controllers yes you know you can change the form factor of a motor controller make them long and skinny like a circuit board like a motherboard for a computer it's like this right it's a rectangle well, you could technically make it really long. So I can make my circuit boards long. And flat. So, I, I believe there is wiggle room, but... I don't want to, like... Oh, will this, con will this conflict with the thighs coming up? Oh, it could. I think these are going to hit these when these rotate up. Will it? It could. 
But then again... No, I, should, I, I shouldn't put these here. Too much... Too much of the legs are going to be coming up, like... Like, if he lifts his knee to his chest, it would, it would hit. I want to try not messing too much with clearance issues. So, let's see how many we've got. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. 39, but that's just half. 39 times 2 will be 78 batteries. No, he's already got um, tons of batteries in his butt, or tons of motors in his butt. And we can't fill this area because um, when his legs come back, when they swing back, they would hit. Plus, I want to leave some areas, like, you know, in between the motors here and there for the circuit boards. We need tons of circuit boards for everything. I don't want to, like, fill every square inch. We'll be in trouble. I'm telling you, if we run out of room, we're out of room. Like, we need to fit a motor controller for each and every motor you see. There's going to be a ton of motor controllers. So, I want to, like, fill this whole area with motor controllers in here. I don't think we can put any more batteries. 78 batteries. They had 60 batteries in a in a um a e-bike battery pack, battery pack. So we're going to have 20 more than that. Um so this will be like a, a pretty substantial e-bike battery pack. Which I think is pretty good. And then... I mean, it looks like a lot of... A lot of motors and not that many batteries, though. But... Oh, and we can fit a lot of... Um, circuit boards like like right here between the PC and the frame we can fit like some circuit boards in here like anywhere we see little cracks we can between each rib we can fit circuit board stuff too and in the pectoral region maybe like very thin surface mount we could fit like some cir some circuit boards in through here I don't know we'll have to do the best we can but luckily we've got a lot of room inside the head because we put nothing in here so that's like kind of our emergency circuit board place we can fit a ton of circuit boards in here and that will help the robot's pinor is right here it's a working pinor and it's very small You can see it's uh, a tic tac. So if that's the onboard batteries, I mean, that's a lot of batteries for, you know, it's demonstration purposes only, really. The main, okay, just, just think with me. The robot is going to do, like, a little walk for the camera, touch its toes, wave, say something cute do a jumping jack 
that's it. Just a just demonstration on a talk show or a stage, just showing off the robot, looking like you know. I even thought about making its body transparent. When it wears clothes, its face won't be transparent, but its legs and body could be transparent skin, so that it can it, like let's say it just looks like me, and then it lifts its shirt, and you're expecting to see like like skin of a stomach and instead you just see like a robot like robot parts kind of like how this thing's transparent you just see inside the robot that would be pretty cool right it might might be even cooler than skin but for everything that's not showing underneath the clothes it would look human so only when it pulls up its clothes you would see like that it's a robot that'd be kind of a cool like shock factor if somebody thought it was a human and then it pulls up its shirt and they see a robot body they'd be like whoa what the heck they would freak people out so I kind of like that idea um, but my point is that just for display purposes he'll be able to do some stuff from his onboard batteries but his onboard batteries aren't meant to be like lasting like good to go that's all he has that's where the battery backpack comes in and that needs to be hot swappable so he'll Swap one on, swap one off. Swap one on, swap one off. He'll, he'll operate primarily from the battery backpack he wears on his back. And the ones that are on board are mainly just to power him while he's changing his backpack. Or while just showing off, hey, I can work even without wearing my backpack. And so he won't always have to be wearing a backpack. He can take it off and walk around and do a little bit of stuff. But then he needs to get it back on pretty soon. So these will be enough, I think, for him to fully operate. Um all the basics for like you know five or ten minutes maybe I don't know and then eventually he's gonna need to strap on a battery backpack and also even the battery backpack system where he'll have like two or three backpacks he'll always have one charging in the wall and one on even that he can supplement by plugging himself directly into the wall in any room so that he's running off the wall as well so that the battery backpacks plus any onboard batteries last even longer and don't have to be used as much he'll use the wall power um, to supplement his battery power to give the batteries more of a break so that's another aspect um, so yeah I think with all that having been said I think this is good on the batteries so we can cross that off right I mean there's no way I'm going to add more here and I'd, I'd rather have them not be fat in fact, now that we've actually established this, I can pull his uh, stomach in a little bit, a little bit more even. <clears throat> nice he's looking a lot more fit now okay so I guess that's it on the batteries wow that was not bad and then he's going to have a power supply as well Okay, boys, I'm, I'm really happy with that. So, let me cross that off. Um, honestly, like... I, I'm not going to 
sculpt like every little thing in the robot. I just wanted all the major components to be to make sure we fit them. Everything else, all that, all the missing gaps and stuff will fit everything else. It's just small stuff. But all the big, the big like, will it fit? All the motors, the batteries, the muscles, the lungs, the cooling systems, the main onboard computer, all of those things we have we have now put in and it all fits so now everything else is just a matter of squeezing in everything else that's needed to make it all work and I think that we'll be just fine we'll get creative we'll we'll do that when we're actually building it but the hard parts behind us now the battery backpack is where the real heavy hitting crazy numbers of batteries can be put in huge battery backpack this is just enough to get him swapping battery backpacks and just enough to display basic capabilities without wearing the backpack for the sake of him being graded does it require an external battery backpack yes or no no but it's recommended or whatever because it's kind of like the big question is, can you make a humanoid robot, yes or no? And if so, can you make one with onboard batteries? Can you fit all the motors and all the batteries? So, It's like answering these basic questions. I want to prove it can be done. But I'm not like so dedicated to the idea of having the batteries be on board that I'm going to like go to great lengths to fit every single battery on board. I'd rather just have the freedom of having battery backpacks. I think that that adds a lot of freedom and flexibility to your battery options for long-term battery operation and takes the stress out of trying to design a robot that consol consol or consolidates or just like squeezes in everything else just to make room for batteries. I don't want batteries to be the focus. I just want enough batteries that it's like a respectable amount gives the robot a little bit of wiggle room some time where he can run on onboard stuff but doesn't have to be anything crazy and I feel that because we just went with a minimal number of onboard batteries we're gonna have a lot more freedom and flexibility on placing all the circuit boards that we will need to handle all the sensors all the motors and everything else without too much crazy creativity and like real head scratching and struggling and frustration. I, I want to leave plenty of room for cir those circuit boards just to save myself from just tremendous aggravation. Even as is, it's just, it's such an insane amount of circuit boards. I'm already like going to have a real battle ahead of me just on that. But because I can make all the circuit boards custom, I can make them in such a way that they'll they'll be um, able to fit into tiny little gaps and spaces as needed. I don't have to make them like in a form factor that's all blocky and hard to fit in. I can make them real flat, skinny, and long, and even flexible sometimes. Alright boys, I'm going to call it there. I feel like that was a great, great session. Awesome. I got done more than I thought. So have a good day, guys.